Hi everyone, I'm Harlene, and in this video we'll be talking about self-isolation and self-quarantine. We're joined by Dr. Rajiv. Thanks so much, Harlene. I'm Dr. Sandhya Rajiv. I work as an emergency physician at Stanford University. I am very excited to join this conversation. A quick review of some important disclaimers. While we talk a lot about COVID, this video series should not be used for personal medical advice. If you're worried about your own health, please talk to your doctor, who knows you and your medical needs best. In some videos, we may also talk about legal issues that have come up during the pandemic. Our aim will be to make sure you're aware of these, but once again, you should talk to a lawyer if you have any legal concerns of your own. Another important point to mention is how new COVID-19 is from a science perspective. I know it feels like we've all been dealing with it forever, but researchers are still learning a lot about the disease. The information in these videos is the most up-to-date to our knowledge at the time of the recording, but we may keep learning more. And finally, we have no financial conflicts of interest to declare. So with that, let's get started. Tell us, Dr. Rajiv, what will we be learning about today? In this video, we're going to talk all about self-isolation and self-quarantine. We will be covering what to do if you or someone you have been in contact with is sick. And we'll be talking about some specific challenges when you have to self-isolate or quarantine. Great. So why should we quarantine or isolate? Well, self-quarantining and self-isolating are both measures to help protect others from getting sick. So if you have or may have a contagious disease like COVID-19, by quarantining or isolating, you are protecting your loved ones and your community from potentially getting sick. But I have a question for you. What is the difference between self-isolation and self-quarantine? That's a great question. I think so many people have been confused between the two. So self-isolation is crucial for anyone who has tested positive for COVID-19 or who has COVID-like symptoms. In order to self-isolate, you should stay at home and separate yourself from others in your home. For how long do I isolate myself? You should stay in self-isolation until three things happen. At least 10 days have passed since the symptoms first appeared. You have had no fever without taking a medicine for fevers for 24 hours, and your symptoms have improved. If you aren't having symptoms, but have had a positive COVID test, you should stay home for at least 10 days after your last positive test. Okay, so I isolate myself if I test positive or have COVID-like symptoms. Then when do I self-quarantine? So self-quarantine applies to anyone who has been in contact with someone who has tested positive for COVID-19. Ideally, if you can't get tested, you should stay home or quarantine for at least 14 days. But because it's difficult to quarantine for 14 entire days, an alternative option that some local public health departments recommend is to quarantine for at least 10 days if you're not getting tested. Because most people who show symptoms do so by 10 days. Or you can stop quarantining after day seven if you get a test on day five or later and that test is negative. If you do follow the shortened quarantine option of seven or 10 days, you still need to monitor for COVID-like symptoms for 14 days. And if you do develop symptoms, you then need to isolate. As a general rule of thumb, people self-quarantining should check their temperature twice a day and keep an eye out for COVID-like symptoms. And they should stay away from others, especially those at high risk for severe illness. Okay, so now I understand why it's so important to self-isolate when you've tested positive for COVID and self-quarantine if you've been exposed to COVID. But I still have some questions. What should you do when a family member is self-isolating at home? Is it enough to have that family member in a different room or is there something more? So if someone in your home has tested positive for COVID-19, there are a few measures you can take to protect the rest of the household. You should have the sick family member keep a mask on whenever they leave the room that they are isolating in, or if someone enters the room they're in. You should avoid sharing household items to the best of your ability. In other words, try not to share phones, dishes, utensils, bedding, toys, etc. Everyone in the household should frequently wash their hands with soap and water and try to disinfect anywhere in the house that the sick person has been. 
And of course, you should try to keep at least six feet or two meters away from the family member who is sick. But what if I share a bedroom or a bathroom with that family member? I live in a home with my grandparents and my dad's brother's family. We're about 10 people in the home, and there isn't a lot of space where I can isolate myself. What should I do? Yeah, that can be unavoidable in some cases. If you share a bedroom, make sure that your room has good airflow. You can open a window or turn on a fan. You should also try to have your beds at least six feet apart from each other. And you can use a physical divider around the sick person's bed. You can make a divider using large cardboard poster, shower curtains, or even a quilt. Additionally, when doing laundry, you can mix the sick person's clothes with those of others, but wear disposable gloves when handling the sick person's laundry. If you share a bathroom with a family member, then have them disinfected after each use. Also have them wear a mask when using the bathroom. Try to have the bathroom have good airflow by opening a window or using a fan. All of these are really helpful tips, but I know that my family would personally want to care for anyone in the family who gets sick. How can we do that but still protect ourselves? First, try to limit the caregiving to one person who is not themselves at increased risk of severe illness from COVID-19. Anytime someone has to interact with a COVID-positive family member, make sure they are wearing a mask. If at all possible, have the caregiver to the sick family member and the caregiver that does household tasks and cares for the rest of the family be two different people. Those are some helpful guidelines. I will definitely keep them in mind if anyone in my family gets sick. So to recap our chat today, we learned about self-isolation and self-quarantine, why we practice them, when we practice them, and how we practice them. Yes. So you should self-isolate yourself if you tested positive for COVID-19 or are feeling COVID-like symptoms. And you should self-quarantine when you've been in contact with someone who has tested positive for COVID-19. Precisely. And we understand that not all homes can practice self-isolation and self-quarantining in the ideal way. However, there are many ways that you can protect yourself and your family from illness, even when living in multi-generational homes or homes without a lot of space. Well, Dr. Rajiv, thank you so much for all this great information. I learned a lot about how to protect myself, my loved ones, and my community. And thank you to everyone who joined us in learning today. Bye for now, and we will see you in the next video.